Welcome to Failure to Launch 2, Outer Space, where we take a look at the tragic comedy state of American rocketry and human space exploration. I don't know if you know this, Thor News is for winners, and that's why you're here. So stick around. This is something NASA rejected. Houston, be advised. We've got a video message. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... We're on the verge of talking about NASA. Because a NASA report says rocket maker Orbital isn't ready for space station missions. Uh-oh, somebody's in trouble. The report criticizes the company's ambitious timeline by Lauren Grush, September 17th, 2015. Wow, you know it's bad if NASA's criticizing you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And speaking of ambitious timelines, uh, isn't the Mars timeline a little ambitious, NASA? Here we see a picture of a rocket exploding. <laughs> That's not funny. Private space flight company Orbital Sciences has set a timeline for rocket launches that is too ambitious and is doubtful the company will launch again on time, according to NASA's Inspector General. The Space Agency's Office of Inspector General released a scathing report today criticizing the flight plans of Orbital, the company that, along with SpaceX, holds a contract with NASA to launch cargo to the station. The Inspector General analyzed orbital strategy for returning to flight after the company's rocket exploded during a routine mission last year. Orbital has been on hiatus from rocket launching since last October after the company's Antares rocket blew up during takeoff at NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. You could say that the orbital rocket got walloped at Wallops, but I wouldn't recommend it because it sounds cheesy. It was supposed to be Orbital's third cargo resupply mission from NASA, but a problem with the rocket's engine caused the entire vehicle to ignite seconds after launch. The explosion destroyed Orbital's Cygnus spacecraft filled with supplies for the station. The Wallops facility also sustained a lot of damage. Well, A, you 
shouldn't have named a spacecraft something that sounds like sickness. Because if something is a rocket named sickness and it explodes, it just makes sense, you know? Yeah, so having commercial flight crews take over for the American Space Agency, it sounds like it's turned into a very bad deal. I know, it's become a Keystone Cops nickel and dime show. And the Russians end up saving us. That's just so weird on so many levels. Since then, Orbital has been working to replace the engines in its Antares rocket. But replacing a rocket engine isn't easy. You have to tweak the rocket's design to incorporate the new engine, and so it takes some time. The problem is that Orbital doesn't have time. It's under a $1.9 billion contract with NASA to launch five more resupply missions to the station by 2016. I guess they've already paid him the money, right? Interesting. So as a temporary solution, Orbital plans to launch its sickness cargo craft atop the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket for the next two launches. When was the Atlas V invented? Like in the 60s? We're still going back to 60s rockets for backups. What is going on? Really, this is... Do I even have to point out how weird this all is? And rather than do five total missions, Orbital will consolidate to four. First Atlas V launch is scheduled for late 2015, while the first Antares launch is scheduled for March 2016. Company says it'll just add more cargo to each mission to make up for the loss. This should come at no extra cost to NASA. Orbital claims. Well, wow, it sounds like a foobar cluster funk to me. But the Inspector General isn't particularly happy with any of these changes, and all of these changes. The OIG report expresses concern over Orbital's decision to launch the Cygnus on the Atlas V rocket. So soon, the Cygnus has never flown on this rocket before, so there may be some unexpected issues with the first flight. Even the smallest miscalculation could cause a failure. And the Inspector General argues Orbital hasn't done enough technical reviews of the Cygnus in the Atlas V combination. The accelerated timeline also leaves out time for doing a flight test of the updated Antares rocket. Overall, the OIG report doesn't think that the March flight is feasible and argues June is more likely. Then there's the decision to drop one of the five planned launches. The report says this limits the flexibility in what supplies can and cannot be sent to the station for each trip. Yeah, so it's like, okay, we will pay you $1.9 billion to fly five flights of cargo to the ISS. And then one exploded. We're like, hey, we got a better idea for our... Remember when you paid us for five more? 
I owe you four. Does that sound like a good deal? Sounds like a space deal, man. Sounds just like space deal. The report goes on to admonish NASA's response to the orbital failure, as well arguing the space agency could have done more to reduce costs associated with the disaster. It also notes that NASA wound up paying an extra $5 million to repair Wallop's flight facility when the money should have come from insurance claims. That's weird, man. That's really weird. As a result of these findings, the Inspector General made a list of recommendations NASA should follow to address the report's concerns. For example, the report called for Orbital to do more reviews of the new Antares rocket before it launches. The Inspector General says Bill Gerstenmeyer NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Space Exploration agreed to follow most of these recommendations. We don't have any space, I mean, whatever. However, Gersten Meyer ignored a recommendation on how NASA could better ensure that insurance claims pay for facility damages instead of the space agency footing the bill. Suspicious again. Yeah, so apparently Quest to restart the human space exploration program just got a little worse. And if there was one thing that couldn't really afford to get worse. That's the state of human space exploration. Still stuck in 1972. If you enjoyed my coverage of the state of American space agencies and human space exploration and want to help support reports like this, please head over to my Indiegogo page where I have a fundraiser going on right now. Help take my channel to the next level. Thank you and God bless everybody. Strange days indeed.